Hi everyone, this is Dr. Patrick Cohn. Uh, welcome back to another uh, mental training webinar. This is the fall 2011 mental training webinar number three uh, for peaksports.com members and kids sports psychology members. So we've got a mix of people on tonight, which is great. I see some mental coaches, we've got some coaches, we've got some athletes, um, so uh, should be a good time tonight. We've got a great topic, how to apply the mental game to competition. Let me first introduce your presenters today, Mr. J.J. Burden, who's been with me for all three webinars. He's a nine-year NFL veteran. Um, he played with Cleveland Browns for two years and then went to Kansas City. Had a long stint with Kansas City, and you'll see some pictures of him. And then he went to the Atlanta Falcons and finished his career at the Atlanta Falcons. JJ, I really appreciate you joining us again on the <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. I, I think I appreciate you inviting me again. It's it's a privilege and honor, and anything that I can share that might help, willing to do it. Well, you know, we might turn you into a mental coach. We might have a side career for you. <laughs> well, I have to admit. I told my wife, this is some good stuff. I wish I kind of had a mental coach when I was playing. All right. So um, so today um, you've got another career, and I'm going to have you introduce kind of what you're doing today. We'll get your plug in because um, I really appreciate you joining us on the webinar. So talk a little bit about this program that you're doing today because I'm a believer and I'm a user right now. Yeah, happy to. Uh, this is kind of something I stumbled onto. Uh, I've been out of the league since 97. I'm, I've been a, a corporate guy owning some companies for a while, and but I'm still active. I still work out, and, and just searching for natural, clean products is something that's always been kind of a goal of mine, uh, even at the age of 46. But yeah, I, I stumbled across some studies on dark chocolate and its medicinal benefits, and I've got a lot of joint pain from uh, several knee surgeries, and I heard Heard about this particular product called Shosai Healthy Chocolate, and it's a gluten-free, kosher, you know, healthy product. Started consuming it with a lot of skepticism, but the product actually worked for me. It really has helped me in a couple of areas, whether it's weight loss, energy, and so forth. So I love the product. I've been taking it four and a half years, so I endorse it. I tell people about it because I think it's a, one of the best kept secrets out there that chocolate could actually be healthy, and, and ours is. So really good product to encourage many people to try it. And, and, you know, I haven't had dinner out here on the East Coast yet. It's 8 o'clock, and so I took a couple of nuggets um, before we came on just to curb my appetite a little bit. So I'm trying to work on, you know, losing some pounds. And uh, so we'll see how that works out for me tonight and if I can give me enough energy to get through tonight. If not, you're going to have to take over, okay? <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, so let's get into it. Uh, I'd like to hear from you, um, JJ, and kind of start it off a little bit. So it hasn't been that long since you retired, you know, and I'm interested in uh, kind of some of the things that you did to practice or sharpen your mental game and how maybe you went about mentally preparing for games. And was it a conscious effort for you saying, okay, i got to get my game face on, i got to get my game sharpened here, i got to focus on my mental game because that's what's going to carry me through the game and the ability to you know, be confident and be focused and be composed if I drop a ball. So did you think of it that way in terms of the mental game about you know, working on – being able to um, let go of plays like your coach was trying to teach you, you've mentioned that before, is that something you consciously worked on or was it just n a normal part of the training that you went through in practice? Yeah, it was a normal part of the training. I think, you know, once you get to that level, you know, if you're a professional athlete, obviously you're there not just from the physical abilities but also the mental abilities. And so, um, the thing for me was visualization. What really helped me a lot was just preparing myself visually that, you know, being in certain situations that I could make the big catch, make the big play, 
being prepared for the audibles, that mental preparation, you really relied a lot on my ability to know the hundreds of plays that could come from Joe Montana's mouth, you know, spending a lot of time preparation-wise and, and knowing those plays. Because once I did that, I felt more confident. Um, and then situational preparation was, was important, too, because the plays they call on third and long would be a little different than third and one. So I would really prepare for those situations for the possible plays they may call so that I could be ready. So, uh, and, then the, and then the last thing was is just mentally you just had to feel, you had to kind of create an aura that you belonged there, that you were one of the best, because it was a very intimidating game because the guys you played against for some of the biggest, strongest, intense athletes, and you could never allow them to see a weakness. So, uh, you know, just exuding with confidence definitely made a difference too. So that's really interesting concept. Now, is that a facade? Is that a facade that you're doing? <laughs> I mean, honestly, or is it something that you really tried to believe in and exude that I'm the best? Or did you partly have to put on a facade and never show this weakness to to um, your opponents? Yeah, I think it's kind of a combination of both. At least for me, I'm, I was 5'10", 160 pounds. I was the smallest receiver in the league. So everybody I went after or played against were either 20, 30, 40 pounds bigger than me. So I had to kind of put this facade on that, hey, I don't care how big you are, I'm still going to hit you. Now, I was a little concerned. These guys were a lot bigger. But if I wanted to do my job, I had to go hit them regardless. So it was something we used to say in, in the NFL is never let them see your weakness. Never let them see your scare. You just play hard and give your best. I think the good coaches today are integrating the mental game into their practices and into their pregame talks. They're more, I think they're more skilled and they understand more the importance of the mental game. When you were playing, did, did the coaches talk about it at all? Was it part of practice and some of the drills and things you went through? Yeah, more from a preparation standpoint, you know, we walk through all the plays, we walk through various situations, and, you know, back then, I'm not sure how many really, you know, focused on the mental. We had some really good coaches like Marty Schottenheimer, who was an excellent motivator. Mm -hmm. He was really good at touching you at the core to get you mentally prepared, to always believe that you're about to go into battle and you can get this done, so... um I think Marty was really good at that, but uh, I don't know how many of my other coaches really focused on the mental aspect of it. Okay, very good. Well, I'm really excited about today's topic because I've really never shared this with anybody but my MGCPs. That's the mental game coaching professionals that I teach. Um, I'm thinking that there may be, this could be a continuation of the Confident Athlete Series, and I would love some, some feedback on you. Uh, from, from the participants who have the, uh, any of the CD programs in the Confident Athlete Series because it's so, so critical. And I, I see Ed Cohn is, is um, an MGCP. He's on. And so hopefully we can get Ed's input if he's mic'd up. Um, but it's so critical when learning the mental skills because I can teach the mental skills to an athlete all day long. They can understand the mental skills. But bottom line, are they able to take that information, that education that I give them, and be able to apply it in a practice or a game situation? And so that is so, so critical. And that, my success depends upon that factor alone, is what I teach an athlete or what you teach an athlete, if you're a coach or a mental coach, can that um, transfer over to them actually doing something and taking action on it. So that's the most critical piece for me. And I'm going to give you some examples, and we're going to go through this. So I'm going to talk about tonight, number one, how to practice the mental game. What can you do as an athlete? What can you do as a coach? And then how to apply the mental game strategies in the competition.